Hi guys and welcome to another episode of JDN Masters and today we are in Type 1 which is the Spoon Sports Customer Workshop and today we have a very special treat for you and as you can see behind me this is the racing EG6 and we're going to be talking about it in detail so come join us. Honda and Spoon fans might of course recognize this famous livery, the yellow and the blue. And you've probably seen it in magazines, in Best Motoring, or in all kinds of media. And this is the actual race car that was used by Spoon uh, before. And so the livery actually is a little bit different from the original EG6 uh, race car when it was used back in the 90s. It's gone through a lot of iterations, but this is actually a true N1 spec EG6. So we're going to be just looking at some of the details of what has changed. This car has been restored by Spoon uh, with new paint and a lot of other new parts. And it's basically a demonstration car which they will use at events uh, to show their racing heritage. And the interesting thing about this car is that it basically has a normal standard engine. but it's a genuine race car because of the other things that's inside like the roll cage which we're going to take a look at and so first thing that we want to talk about is that the body is all original there are no parts that are changed for aerodynamics so in the old racing series you had the N1 which was basically a completely stock car and the Super Taikyu series which is very similar Super Taikyu is based on a road car but they were allowed some regulations to change things like the bumper uh, the rear spoiler and the rear bumper uh, but this as you can see doesn't have the iconic spoon ducktail wing or the lower lip and so it's it's also a very interesting vehicle so let's look at some of the differences visually first from the exterior what is the difference between a road car and a race car now in racing, when the car comes into the pit, there is no time for the driver to open the latch for the, the trunk or for the bonnet. So they have bonnet pins in the front and on the rear, it's these quick release spring catches. And it opens like this. And it opens up. And the EG6 has a very interesting mechanism. Um, it's a split tailgate and it's different from the other hatchbacks. And so the, usually there are dampers here, but that's, that's gone and you have the latch here, which opens up. It is in the split tailgate. This is one of the design features of the EG6. The road car has a fold down seat, which makes it like a little sort of mini wagon. And you can see in the reference photos here, how that was a design point of the sport civic generation. Under here sits the racing regulation fuel tank. So in any sanctioned race, the car has to be refitted with a safety roll cage and a bigger fuel tank usually a lot bigger than the standard one so the standard fuel tank from underneath the car is removed and it's fitted with a racing regulation fuel tank which is a much larger capacity and i believe that this capacity uh, for n1 endurance spec which they have to race like six hours is probably something like 80 or 90 kilo uh, kilometers not kilometers liters <laughs> sorry uh, so this fuel tank is much larger than the standard one, somewhere between 60 to even 100 in order for it to last the race. Now, of course, fuel goes very fast in an NA car like this. So what's interesting is that the fuel tank is inside the trunk compartment, which also gives it a kind of weight balance on the back. But as you can imagine, as the fuel goes down, the rear becomes lighter. The grip also changes as the car is going into the corner, so the drivers actually have to adjust by understanding how much fuel is being left. So what happens is car comes to the pits, they open this up and unscrew this and a fuel bottle tank gets poured into that while they change the tires. But since this is not the Super Taikyu spec, it's a little bit different from the EK Civic one upstairs, which we'll see later. And having a closer look at the roll cage, and you can see that this is actually welded into the body rather than a bolt on. And this is a regulation for uh, race cars. Also the body is painted in a grey, let's call it the body in white, it's purposely painted grey as we explained in the last video so that the mechanics can see if there's any cracks in the body it's easier to spot and this is something that most race cars will have. Okay so put this back like this and if the mechanic forgets to latch this on the, the wing will actually come out. 
But let's have a look at the engine. So of course in a race car, you have these latches, which are removed, pull open like this, and there's no bonnet latch underneath, it just lifts up. But this one still has the standard latch right here. So let's have a look at the engine bay of this N1 race car. Now, the engine specs itself is completely factory stock, which means the pistons and the intake manifold, uh, the camshaft, they're all from a standard B16A series from the EG6 SIR. But what you see here are spoon parts that have been added and it's just kind of like a showcase for their parts. So let's see what do we have. They have the yellow cam head cover, which is iconic to spoon. These are the tension cords, which has extra grounding that's point, that gives uh, extra resistance capacity lower to one point. You've got a spoon strut bar, which is a little bit different from the standard mounting points. The double wishbone uh, is down here, and the spoon one actually mounts directly to the upper strut, so that's a little bit different. Intake manifold is the same. It's, this air box actually comes from a DC2, not the EG6. The EG6 one's a little bit of a different shape. You have also the spoon silicon uh, radiator hoses and the racing type large aluminum radiator. Now on the road car, it's actually half the size, which is a uh, specific specification. So this is a full size one. Also with a cap here, just for a little bling and bits um, and the little socks there too. Now there's a little interesting thing about these socks. It's not just for dress up. In high load conditions in racing, the fluid actually boils up and might come out of the cap. So this is actually to catch the fluid uh, from over seeping. But otherwise, it's pretty much a standard engine power. But the one thing that regulations are allowed to change is the exhaust system, all the way from the exhaust manifold. And this is the four to two exhaust manifold and it's separated at the bottom here. And there's a two to one and it runs all the way to the back. The Spoon N1 muffler, which you can see here, it's cylindrical, it's much smaller and lighter than the street version, which is a huge muffler. They actually have a street version, but this is their street N1 exhaust, which is a little bit different from the actual race one. The actual race ones are just a straight through. It's really, really loud. But we turn, we'll turn on the car a little bit, and you can see that this is actually a street spec um, demo car, which is on a race car. So it's like a showcase. Now, what's really interesting about this is that you can have a little bung silencer inside and this would actually pass the Japanese Shaken MOT right at the limit. It's actually not really loud. Let's hear the exhaust note and how loud it actually is. Mm. The fuel pump's going and... So with the uh, silencer off, it's probably a little bit over 100 decibels. But with the, with the silencer on, just right at the limit. Now, of course, the EG6 being an older car has a much higher limit for uh, the decibels that is allowed by the shaker, but it's still, it's not really loud. So in Japan, the measurement of the decibels is at 4,000 RPM. And at 4,000 RPM, if the limit of over 100 is reached, then it's too loud. So this is probably just right below that. And of course, being an older car, the decibel limit is actually a bit higher. But this is completely uh, an N1-inspired design for a street exhaust. So um, it's also cheaper than the street muffler, which is pretty interesting. So this is quite a popular product. This number 95 number is the traditional Spoon's uh, racing number. Uh, they use it in a lot of their Civics, in their EG6 and also the EK4 and the EK9. So um, just this number is here for uh, nostalgic purposes. Carbon fiber, wing mirrors, uh, it's also a very popular spoon product. And also these wheels, which are very, very iconic for spoon enthusiasts. Uh, these are 15 inch Rega Master Evo based, and they call it the SW388. Now, what that means, spoon wheels, 3.88 kilograms. That's the actual weight of these 15 inch original wheels, which is very light. The original wheels are probably something like seven kilos, six to seven kilos. Um, 
and inside there we have the spoon Nissin made four pot calipers so this combination is you know something spoon fanboys uh, because a must-have item they're pretty expensive the wheels but the caliper itself that's kind of an affordable price the good thing about this is that it's it ne just needs a bracket and you can basically attach this to most of the Hondas for the EK9 it's just a bolt-on for the DC2 so it is as well um, one of the more popular products and it's also running a full adjustable suspension and um, you can see here this is the dial but I doubt this is the actual racing spec suspension the N1 or the Taiki regulations allow uh, fully adjustable suspension that's only the one of the few things that can be changed um, on the standard road car to make it a race car. Things like the arms, um, the length, uh, they're not allowed to be changed. So let's have a look inside now. And now we're inside the race car. Now by N1 regulations, the dashboard and the door trim must be retained from the road car, but everything else can be stripped and fitted with a roll cage. So let's have a look at the roll cage. It starts from the back, welded in. It's a four point with a crossbar here. And on the front, you can see how the bar is also welded into the roof frame and this is actually uh, an additional piece and it runs through the dashboard comes down and has an extension uh, that forms a kind of a secondary crash bar and this is the N1 and Taiku regulations so everything's been stripped out covered in the paint and this is the spoon original design seat which is quite small let me see if I can fit into it I'm quite tall so iconic also Takata four points race racing harness it's not even a six harness so what's interesting about this car is that racing street demo car but it's supposed to look like a race car but a lot of things are actually missing from the actual race car so uh, the fire extinguisher for example it's not here it only has one seat but um this is pretty much how the driving position of the race car is. is much lower than the standard car, of course. And, oh, compared to the Recaro seats that we did in our last video, we talked about the pole position, which is a little wider, but this is actually even wider than that. The material is strangely like a sponge that you use in a bathtub. So I'm just kind of sitting in this huge sponge, um, which is quite interesting okay so Momo tuner steering wheel which is another iconic spoon part but let's have a look at the instrument cluster now this is obviously not from the original race car these are defi items just meant to uh, replicate the race car but the real n1 race car back in the day um, probably didn't run uh, the original meters as well and here you have the circuit breaker um, ignition cutoff switch which is a standard equipment for any race car of any sort of category so this is one thing that you always find on there center console has been ripped off um, and you can see the shift lever this is actually a type R short shift lever the normal SIR one is straight but the type R one actually comes closer to you and it's just bare metal um, if any one of you want to make your race car for the roads, so this is this is the formula you have to do. You you, you don't need a, a passenger um, in the side. You don't need anyone in the back. But can you drive this thing every day? Um, this probably just belongs on the racetrack, and um, we feel that this is really really cool as long as it's on the racetrack. We should go racing in this. Turn the circuit breaker on. Ignition's on. Start. Oh, so it has a normal clutch. Feels like a normal clutch, but I'm sure it's probably a racing clutch. Otherwise, everything just feels like a normal road car uh, with the spoon bushings and everything. No power steering, of course, in a road in, a, in this race car, which is probably based on the SIR1. Not that difficult to drive, to be honest. Of course, I can only drive it within the in, within this little space here once you get it moving it's actually quite 
easy to drive. Feels like my car. <laughs> Seriously, feels like my car. It's just no power steering. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, the base car is the SIR1. SIR1, not SIR2. So guys, that was a quick overview of the Spoon EG6 race car demo car. And let us know in the comments if you want us to review the, the other iconic race cars. But catch us also in the next video where we're going to review this Accord Euro R, which is actually a refurbished car that's on sale now by Spoon. So. Catch you in the next episode. Peace out.